Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I talk about celestial transits over the coming week and how they affect all of us, all zodiac signs. So, this is a forecast for the week between the 6th and the 13th of April 2019. How is the sky treating you? We had all this Piscean energy that we're moving away from, well not just yet, Venus, planet of relationship, love and value is coming into a conjunction with Neptune and we're going to talk about that a little a little further down the video but we're coming from a new moon in Aries that is squaring widely Saturn and Pluto this is a new month that isn't Piscean anymore this is an Aryan month and not just an Aryan month an Aryan month that demands us to ch challenges us to face restrictions that have halted us before and create transformation Saturn Pluto so we have to get ready for that rekindling of our identity Aries we have to get ready for that realignment with who we are and the beginning of this week is going to be a wonderful time to do that more easily more lovingly and more tenderly and actually provide a soft uh, take off for this whole process so that's my advice to so you take Monday let's say uh, uh, from Sunday night onwards throughout Monday as a time to rekindle that fire within you to realign yourself with what it is you're looking forward to over this next week because this is a week in which at the end of it and during it we're having two squares the Sun squares Saturn on Wednesday if I'm not mistaken and then it's going to square Pluto on Saturday so again our identity who we are and what we create the Sun is going to be challenged by a square to the law restrictions and reality doing things right are we doing things right this is a time that we are faced with feedback from reality about who we are and what we've done and sometimes that feedback can find us lacking and we could get a little more depressed it could get us down but then a few days later we're having the square to Pluto we are demanded or challenged to create the transformation needed for growth that's what Scorpio is about that's what uh, Pluto is about. It's about taking that unknown and creating something that is not only known from it, not only brought to the surface uh, uh, in that process, but because of my demons, because of my failures, because of my fears, because of the darkness that I've fought and now know I am transformed and can, can, now do things or act in a way that I couldn't before because I hold a new understanding, a deeper understanding, a Plutonian understanding, an understanding that has transformed who I am. So this potential for transformation and growth is real throughout this week. Um, other than that, we're having Jupiter turn retrograde at the end of the week. It's going to spend its time retrograding until the end of the year and then it's going to go back straight forward. And when any planet is retrograde, the, plan that, that the issues that are ruled by that planet and the themes that describe that planet act in a different way. We get a different viewpoint and angle about those matters. So what are we talking when we're talking about Jupiter? We're talking about expansion, about the broadening of our horizons, about luck, about wisdom coming in and knowledge. So during the next few months, all of these subjects of widening, of spreading our uh, knowledge and information and receiving it, luck coming our way and actually widening our scopes and our endeavors it's not going to come how we imagined it to come or how we wanted it or 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 planned it 
to come. It's going to come in new ways that we haven't thought of, that we haven't uh, 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 even thought that could lead to that development. And it's going to provide us with a new understanding that we would have never gotten if that planet was in regular motion. So see what's that Jupiter doing in your natal chart over the next few months. Um, other than that, that Jupiter is going to square Mercury at the end of the week. And that this, at the same time that Mercury, the planet of communication of our left brain hemisphere, is going to sextile Pluto. So the end of this week is a great time to open things up and dive in. You know, if there's anything you need to talk about, if there's anything you need to communicate, it's a good time to do it. And we can dive in and, and get a more profound, deeper understanding about who we are and what the matters at hand are like. But we need to be careful not to talk too much, not to open up too much, not to uh, um, be untactful or indiscreet with that square as well, to say things hastily that we don't really want to let out or don't really mean. Talking about Mercury, earlier this week, the Sunday the 7th, it's going to sextile Saturn. So Sunday and Monday are good days for business deals being signed, for taking strategic things in your work forward, for advancement as well. Other than that, throughout this week, Saturday um, the 6th, moving through it, I see there's a need for patience and there's a need for lowering the drama just like next Saturday, but next Saturday the 13th is even more so with that nature. Um, we could be very sensitive on the 13th. Sunday the 7th and Monday the 8th, good days in the sky, good days to take things forward and establish change, rekindle that flame, do that realignment. Just don't be too hasteful and don't be too uh, um, don't act too much out of a state of necessity and urgency because Tuesday the moon is going to conjunct Mars things could go a little too fast and be too furious so watch those male energies both emanating from you and coming at you from the world don't react with fire pour some water over it steam steam anyway um, Wednesday a lot of squares in the sky the moon is going to square Venus and Neptune and then the sun is squaring Mars <clears throat> and then the moon is squaring Mercury. So it could be a day that we are faced with some challenging aspects regarding our relationships and communication or things that we've hoped that would be a kind of different but really are not. This is also the day that Venus is going to conjunct Neptune exactly. Let's talk about that conjunction. We're going to feel from the beginning of the week and up to the end of next week. Venus feels well with Neptune. It's the lower octave of Neptune and really it's about romance and the union of love. Personal love, universal love, becoming one, at one meant with the universe with the world or with my partner, with my spouse. It's a wonderful time to mellow within uh, um, romance and love and cuddling and to reconnect to nature, to the wildness, to anything that is uncultured and, 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 and outside human society in a sense. Things that have not been corrupted by men that are still as innocent, as wild as they were before. One thing we have to watch out from is to put a little, to put some guards on our walls. When Venus hits Neptune, we could want that at one moment with a perfect stranger. We could feel that kindled spirit feeling with almost anyone. We can see the angel within the monster. 
So I don't want us to bring into our lives any subjects or projects or people that are not really as hygienic as we make them up to be in our minds. They're not that much of a healthy influence on our lives. We have to be more realistic at that time to balance things out. Don't forget yourself in the pink lenses. That's what I'm talking about. Um, I had this angry remark this week from a viewer that I was talking about Pisces as, as, as if it is something negative. Well, it isn't negative or positive. It's just dreamy. It remembers something that was uncorrupted, that was idyllic and utopic back then, when? Before coming to this plane. That was actually one of Socrates' Uh, um, arguments for the eternal existence of the soul. He said, look, when we come into this world, we already know the concepts of good and evil, light and darkness, cold and warmth. But we do not know them from this world, because here everything is imperfect and only gradual. It's that hot or that cold, it's this good or that bad, it's this salty or that sweet, but it's not, anything isn't perfect, it's not the full potential, it's not the idea that it was back when our soul remembers it, before coming to this world of quantitative and limited uh, um, matter. The idyllic world, everything was perfect. And we remember it from a time before coming here. That's Socrates for you, if I remember what he said correctly. So through this time, we need to understand that Pisces is the dream. And we have two ways about it. Either make this dream a reality, or understand it was an illusion. Make reality shatter those dreams. But passivity, and that's the weakness of Pisces, can lead to the latter. It is martial and Aryan energy that we need to manifest that dream in the real. Okay. And some of the utopian belief that Pisces has. Let's see what's happening in the sky on Wednesday. Wednesday, that's the day that Jupiter turns retrograde. As I said before, and Thursday the 11th, basically a good day. Better be in a safe, nice, warm environment that you feel you belong to because we were a little sensitive that day. Be careful not to act out from that sensitivity, not to get too hurt or hurt somebody else. Because there is a square to Chiron as well. And on Friday the 12th, we talked about communication. It's a day that we could have a lot of satisfaction and fun. It's a great day to go out to nature. Um, or just do anything that is connected with inspiration, art, or spirituality. And Saturday the 13th, as I said, be careful not to mellow in the drama on the one hand and be more patient but other than that it could be a wonderful day to just enjoy yourself to do something playful with your life as the moon is in leo i want to thank you for listening and i want to thank you for sharing these videos and i want to thank you for um commenting on them and if you want to study with me let me know there's a new course opening up for beginners soon you can contact me via my israeli number on whatsapp um or through my email, you have all the details at the end of this video. May we live long and have a wonderful week, and most of all, prosper. Take care.